Those bears down in Waco used to be the buzz in all of college football. Everyone loved to make them the dark horse team to make the national championship or even the college football playoff. They had a Heisman winner, talented teams, and they dominated recruiting in the same state as Texas and TCU. But seeing they finished 1-11 this past season, literally what the heck happened? So today's video will be going over what happened to Baylor football and how they hit rock bottom. So let's get into it. Baylor is not a powerhouse college football program. They don't have the great history like other schools. Heck, even recently they didn't appear in a bowl game from 1995 through 2009. Baylor didn't have a winning record from 1996 through 2010. And I'm going to skip all the history before the 2000s because I just don't really think it's going to tell today's story. But it is still important, just not for this video. Under coach Kevin Steele and Guy Morris, Baylor didn't have much success. Kevin was a coach from 1999 through 2002, and they didn't have a season with more than three wins. And Guy was the coach from 2003 through 2007, and his best season was 5-6. and six. So Baylor needed a new head coach, and they looked down the state at the University of Houston's coach, Art Bryles. Art Bryles was a very great high school coach in Texas for most of his career, but in 2000 he became the running backs coach at Texas Tech, and something I found out while researching this video was Wes Welker was actually recruited by Art Bryles at Texas Tech, and he saw his talent. In 2003, Art Bryles took over as the Houston Cougars head coach, which was a surprise considering he only spent two years in college coaching. But he was a smart guy, and Houston was so desperate that they decided to give him a shot. His time at Houston wasn't out of this world or amazing, but he got that team fixed and they started playing much better. He got them to a bowl game in four out of his five years there, but on November 27th of 2007, Baylor interviewed Art Browles to become their next head coach, and he was hired the next day to a seven-year contract. So you already got the rundown of what Baylor was like before Art, so let's talk about what his future seasons would look like. The great thing for Coach Browles was that he had a great quarterback ready to start for him. Robert Griffin III was a four-star quarterback from Texas, and he was offered to play for Coach Mack Brown at Texas, but they didn't really see him as a quarterback because of his extensive track background. So he chose to play at Houston under Coach Bryles, over schools like Kansas, Nebraska, and Tennessee. But when Coach Bryles left for Baylor, so did RG3, and he wanted to turn that program around with his coach. And in his first season in 2008 at Baylor, they went 4-8 and eight and 2-6 and six in the Big 12. So that season was a feel for what to expect, and they should be able to get much better. But in 2009, they again went 4-8, and eight, but this time 1-7 in conference play, and RG3 was injured and missed all of conference play, so that had an effect on the situation. The 2010 season was a bit of a breakthrough for Baylor. They finished 7-5 and 4-4 and four and four in conference, RG3 passed for 3,000 yards, and they finally made a bowl game even though they lost. And this was their first winning season in 15 years. But the 2011 season, Baylor was about to show the world what they were really about. Baylor started out the year versus number 14 ranked TCU, who finished as the second best team in the country the year before, and they won the Rose Bowl with an undefeated record. And this game showed off how great their offense could be. RG3 threw for 5 touchdowns and 359 yards, which set off his Heisman campaign to a hot start. And Baylor went on to win the game 50-48 in one of the all-time classics I've personally seen. This marked Baylor's first win versus a ranked team since 2004, and now out of nowhere Baylor went from an unranked team to one that could contend with anyone at any week. They were even projected to finish 6 in the Big 12, but now they had a quarterback who was on a mission and a coach who was ready to have his best season yet. Baylor only lost 3 games that season, one of which was by 1 point, and the other 2 were blowouts on the road. Robert Griffin III was a monster on the field. He finished the season with 4,293 passing yards, 37 passing touchdowns, and 699 rushing yards, and 10 rushing touchdowns. He won the Heisman Trophy, finishing ahead of Andrew Luck and Trent Richardson and was one of the most electric college athletes we have seen in a single season. With that 10-3 record, Baylor played the Alamo Bowl versus Washington, and that game ended up being the highest scoring game in bowl history that ended in regulation. Baylor won that game 67-56 in regulation, and it didn't even go to overtime. But for Baylor, they had one big issue after the season ended. RG3 was leaving for the NFL Draft, and they needed to find a replacement fast. Baylor had two backups. They had Nick Florence and Bryce Petty. They went with Nick Florence as the starter and started out the 2012 campaign 3-0. And they almost beat West Virginia, who was ranked number 9 that week, when they had Geno Smith. But they lost 70-63, which sparked a four-game losing streak. Now Baylor was 3-4, they then beat Kansas and lost to the number 12 team in the nation in Oklahoma. So they had a 4-5 record. And the problem was that they weren't really getting blown out in any of these games. They just were barely losing. And Baylor turned it around their next game versus the number one team in the nation in Kansas State. Baylor won that game and ended the season on a four game winning streak and a win in the Holiday Bowl versus UCLA, capping off an 8 5 season. But the 2013 season was going to be one of the best in school history. Led by quarterback Bryce Petty, the Bears started the season unranked, but they won nine straight games and were the number three team ranked in the nation. They did lose to Oklahoma State, which ended their chances of making the national championship, even though they ended up winning the outright Big 12 championship title. But they did make the Fiesta Bowl, which marked the school's first ever BCS Bowl appearance, 
and their first major bowl game in 33 years. They played a UCF team led by Blake Bortles, but they lost that game 52-42 and ended their great season on a loss. Now the 2014 season, Baylor kept up with the success. And right now in the video I want to mention Baylor never really dominated recruiting. They never got the top 10 classes, and they were always hovering around the late 20s and early 40s in terms of their recruiting class rankings. So Coach Bryles really had a good system in place, and they were able to win without the amazing athletes like the top schools they competed against. Now Bryce Petty was back for his final season at Baylor and won to win a national championship for his school. This is going to be their first season in their new stadium in McLean State, Stadium, and the Bears started out number 10 in the rankings for the season. And they started out the season 5-0 before they played one of the most polarizing games in college football history. Number 9 TCU was heading into Waco to play number 5 Baylor. Now based on the rest of the season, if TCU won this game, they would have won the Big 12 and made the playoff. And if Baylor won this game and didn't lose the rest of the season, they would have won the Big 12 and made the playoff. This game was an all-time classic just like their meeting in 2012. TCU and Baylor had an all-time war versus each other, and Baylor won that game on the final seconds with a field goal, winning 61-58. So all Baylor had to do was win out and they were going to be good. But the next week, they went to West Virginia and lost that game 41-27, and this was the worst case scenario. Baylor did win out the rest of the season after that, and TCU did lose a game after they played Baylor. And since the Big 12 didn't have a championship game, they had to split the title and both missed out on the playoff. So Baylor was the first team out, and TCU was the second team out. Baylor played in the Cotton Bowl versus Michigan State, and they lost that game by one point in a 42-41 loss. But this was not their last great year. Entering the 2015 season, Baylor was ranked number 4 in the nation. They had a new quarterback in Seth Russell, and had a great backup in Jared. Stidham. So Baylor had some players. Baylor won their first eight games and were the number two team ranked in the nation at the start of November. The offense was rolling and looked even better than the previous year. They didn't score less than 56 points in their first six games. But against Iowa State in their seventh game, Seth Russell got injured and needed neck surgery and was going to miss the rest of the season. This was a huge blow considering their offense, but true freshman Jarrett Stidham took over and they still had big hopes. Baylor won their next game versus Kansas State, but Baylor played Oklahoma in their next week and lost 44-34. But they still had a shot to be good. They beat the number four team in the nation in Oklahoma State the next week, but they lost to TCU in Texas to end their season 9-3, and that earned them a spot in the Athletic Bowl versus number 10 North Carolina, and they won that game 49-38. And now, ensue the downfall. Seth Russell was going to be coming back for the upcoming 2016 season, but this was not going to be the same team. Back in September of 2015, Baylor had several players convicted of sexual assault charges, and there were many allegations against more of Art Browse players. Now why did Art Browse get heat from everyone? Well people hated how he handled the situation, how he let players off the hook, he ignored the victims, and he ignored the warnings about some of his players. The school and the athletic department were not taking this matter seriously, and they provided little support. So they did an internal investigation and found out that the coaches knew of these allegations, and they didn't punish their players for their crimes and let them walk free. So the school's president and athletic director resigned, and Baylor terminated Art Brow's contract. So now Baylor was in a complete mess and didn't have a coach. Their backup quarterback Jared Stidham, who looked extremely positive for the school, decided to transfer, and this was going to be Seth Russell's last year. Baylor decided to hire Jim Grove who was the former head coach of Wake Forest because of his experience and he would be a good interim coach. Now Baylor actually started out the year 6-0 and Seth Russell was looking really good coming off that injury. They lost by one point to Texas and then lost to TCU and were 6-2. Then they played Oklahoma. Sadly, Seth Russell was injured again and was out for the year and Baylor lost to Oklahoma. Now they were 6-3 and, and lost their next three games to finish 6-6. Six six. They did make a bowl game in one versus Boise State to end the year 7-6, but Baylor had a lot of issues moving forward. Jim Grobe was not retained as head coach, and Baylor decided to hire Matt Rule of Temple to become their next head coach. Matt cleaned house and got all new assistants. Now Baylor did not have a great year in his first season. They lost their first game versus Liberty at home, and they lost their second game to UT San Antonio. Now these were bad losses, and Baylor only won one game that season versus Kansas to finish 1-11. And now Baylor is at a huge crossroads at whether they will be able to bring back what Art Bryles had brought there. Remember, this was not a powerhouse before Art Bryles got there. They were the doormat of the Big 12 with Kansas. And now, no one really knows what Baylor is right now. So to conclude, the downfall of Baylor football came due to allegations against players, a mess led by the dismissal of their coach, and being in a state like Texas, it's hard to do great competing against Texas, Texas A&M, and TCU in recruiting. Will Baylor be able to come back to their glory days? I don't know, but I hope they can. It's sad what's happened there, and this is a new year, and we will just have to wait and see what happens. Thank you.